Hello again, and welcome to another Reflections. On today's show, we're going to go outside New Brunswick to take a look at a rather beautiful old church that I have recently visited. Then we're going to come back to St. John to learn more about a, a local band, and then we'll find out why a St. John Merchants Association wants to beautify our most prominent square here in the city. Now, instead of visiting a home this week, I want to take you inside a church that I had visited in Quebec City. Now, I have to admit, I've never seen a church quite like this before here in New Brunswick. It's just gorgeous. Now, I don't know much about the church, its history or whatever, but I thought you'd really appreciate the decoration. So let's go inside the church, and I'll do my best to tell you what it is. Now, this is the chapel at the seminary in Quebec City. Now, the difference between the chapel and the, and the church, I really don't know, but it's a, a Roman Catholic chapel. It contains the, um, the remains of Bishop Laval, and I understand Bishop Laval uh, is being considered for, for sainthood. But what really struck me out, or struck me here in, in the church, was the amount of trompe l'oeil, or the illusionistic decoration. They have taken, taken metal and plaster and, and uh, wood and painted it to look like something it, something it isn't. Now, in our next slide, we'll get a bit closer, and you notice the decorations in the back. Um, if, I, if I get the order correct, the bottom two-thirds of the, this is um, painted illusionistic, and the top part of it is actually three-dimensional. But when you look at it, as we see in the next slide, now the whole thing looks like it all fits. It's all part of the same thing. But again, part of this is an illusion. It's painted to make it look three-dimensional, where, as I said, part of it is three-dimensional, and the rest is all flat and painted to look like it is part of this illusionistic. We can see the, the pillars on either side. We can see the, the brown marbling, where, again, this is painted to look like marble. We can see at the, uh, the capitals at the top of the pillars a lot of gold leaf paint. I say I, I was just overwhelmed by the amount of decoration and the beauty in this particular chapel. And then our next slide, we can see, again, with a trompe l'oeil decoration, of course, they paint in the shadows to give you that three-dimensional look. Now, I say I am not aware of a church in New Brunswick that is painted even similar to this, but if I'm wrong, I'd really like to know because I'd love to photograph and visit any church here in the province or even in Nova Scotia or um, the state of Maine that has decorations like this. Again, we can just see some of the decoration. Again, lots of gold, lots of color, and there's lots of light. Now, these photographs I took at the, uh, the latter part of the day, so there wasn't an awful lot of sunlight coming in, so the colors are really not uh, true. But I think, again, you'll get the impression that this is one gorgeous church. Our next slide shows again some more of these decorations. One thing I found rather interesting uh, about the church is that I was told that this particular chapel contains more relics than any other Catholic church in the world which, again, it was just fascinating to, to realize that these relics have been assembled in, in this particular church, and you can see them throughout the entire church. Then our next slide, I think I, I must have laid on the floor of the chapel to get this particular view, but we can see these huge pillars on the, the second uh, level, again, the marbleized, and I have shown in previous programs homes around St. John that have this type of painting, uh, marbleizing, and other forms of trompe painting. Uh, the Chipman Hill properties are probably the most famous here in St. John, and I'm sure there are other homes throughout the province that has various types of trompe painting. And again, if you know of any that I haven't mentioned previous, please let me know. Now that really, okay, now the, it's a different type of marble here, but again, you can see how, uh, I think these particular pillars are covered with a very thin metal. Again, paint it to look like marble, Again, overwhelming. Now, there was another church that I visited, the uh, Basilica in Quebec City, where, um, where we've seen recently when they uh, had the funeral service of uh, former pre uh, Premier René uh, Levesque was held from the Basilica. We'll show that sometime in the next few weeks. Well, that's what I've substituted for my homes in New Brunswick today. I think you'll appreciate that it was a, quite, a beautiful, uh, quite a beautiful structure. Now, it's commercial time again. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back. Now this photograph, or this film, is one of my favorite. The band we have shown right here is the City Cornet Band, and we're going to learn more about that band. The bandmaster to the left was Frank Waddington. 
This film was shot on July 1st, 1927, the 60th anniversary of Canadian Confederation. Now, I think the street is King Street East. I'm, I'm not sure. I'll have to go back to the newspapers to, uh, to find out exactly. They had a parade. And we can see another band here in the, in the foreground. That may have been the Junior Cornet Band. That I'm not sure. How's this for a float? This is right after the war. Mayor Walter White delivering an address down at the uh, Bear Green Armory. And then we have decorations at uh, the monument to Samuel Leonard Tilly, Father Confederation. And then momentarily, we're going to go to the um, King Square Cenotaph for an additional wreath lane ceremony. And that's just the short clip that I have on the, um, on the 1927 celebrations. But more importantly for me, of course, was the City Cornet Band segment. Now, in November 1874, a small group of Roman Catholic boys formed the band, and this became known as the City Cornet Band, which for many, many years was the most prominent of all the St. John bands. Now, one of the charter members of the band in 1874 was uh, James Connolly. His daughter, Mary McCann, joins me today. Mary, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, Harold. It's nice now, to be here. You have been away from St. John for how many years? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven years, and... Uh, Finally, we're back, and I'm very thankful because Boston was never home. <laughs> now, I, you called me, I assume, because you found out I was interested in the Cornet Band Club. Yes, I had gathered some information for my three children because they wouldn't have known their grandparents. And uh, then when I knew that you were so interested in it, and thank heavens, you know, you, you have gathered so much information over the past 11 years that you know as much about it as anybody in St. John ever did. And um, uh, it's great to be home. There, I can see so many changes in the city. Well, okay, one of the changes which we'll speak about shortly will be the bandstand in the square. Yes. But growing up, having a father who was such a prominent member of the band, you must have heard something and learned a bit about the band. Oh, yes, it was, he was devoted to it. What, what, what was the band famous for? Um, what did they really do? It, well, its longevity is one thing, you know, and they played at all of the community um, uh, interests, you know, anything that was, in, that was of interest to the community, the band was interested in. And um, they were really talent, a talented band and devoted to the band. I, I think you said that you think it's still organized as well, a band. That I'm not sure. We, we know the band lasts until sometime in the 50s, but I'm not sure when they disband. Maybe one of our viewers can tell us more about the band when it, when it closed or, or finished. But um, Mary, we have some photographs that uh, I collected actually quite a few years ago that your si sister gave me, Rita. Rita. Hmm. Um, we'll take a look at those photographs and we'll tell a wee bit more about the band. Now this photograph is the first photograph that was ever taken of the band. They're at the um, police station on King Street East. Wasn't that where they had the band room? Uh, police station on King Street East, yes. Yeah. Now, where is your dad? I mean, I on know. Can, can you left recommend? left-hand corner. If this is... I don't have my TV glasses. Uh, well, yeah, that's your father, left-hand corner. What I'm, instrument did he play? Uh, um, the euphonium. Euphonium. And it doesn't look like a, quite a large band at that point. There's, what, 7, 8, 10, 10, 12 members. You know what, Mary? I don't know if I've told you this, but... But a year and a half ago, I purchased the cap bags that are shown that they wore at this time. It was yes, just a I fluke. It was wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. Okay, now if we go to the next... Wouldn't it be nice if you could get a whole uniform? Well, let's take Somebody a look at this uniform. There. We'll see that eventually it changes. This is a blueberry picnic in 1906 at Wellsford. Now, your dad, uh, we can recognize your dad anyways. He's with the bottom right. right. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the other band members, of course, they're unidentified. I mean, we can come up with a list of names of who were members at the time, mm -hmm. but whether we can pick them all out, I'm not sure. Now, they went to the Chicago's World's Fair, didn't they? Yes, and I understood from my mother that they received honorable mention, although neither you nor I have been able to locate anything in print to that effect yet. Not yet. But that's what she told us. Okay, now in our next photograph, mm. this is your dad. Mm. Now, I suppose we should tell our viewers that you don't have any photographs of your dad. No, they were destroyed in one of the freshets. But you, St. John you will shortly. Uh, we're having yes. these copied for you. Now, again, we can see a, a second uniform here. 
that uh, the band had. Mm -hmm. And then our next photograph, I believe it's the um, Junior Band, formed in November 1912. Mm -hmm. at the King Square Bandstand. Now, didn't you have other family yes. members in the band? Yes, some of my brothers, uh, the eldest one, uh, was in the junior band. Um, and, you know, it's sort of hazy, because Papa died when I was four and a half, you know. So you only picked up a lot through, uh, through your, your family, family history. Yes. Okay, now our last photograph, I think, is of the band in 1924, which was their if I calculate quickly, is what, the 26th, what, their 50th anniversary? The 50th anniversary. Yeah. And your dad is well, to the center, first row. He's the first one to the left of the euphonium. The bandmaster at this time was Frank Waddington. I think you oh, remember yes. him. Oh, yes. He used to live down King Street. In fact, he is the bandmaster who was in the uh, film clip we just saw. Yeah. And in fact, I should mention that the Papa's opening... On the, on the left of the division, is he not? Yes, just yes. left. Uh, we can see him with his euphonium in his left hand mm -hmm. and small mustache. Now, your dad died shortly after this. Mm -hmm. But I, I just want to mention that in our opening scene of the program, it shows the parade coming down Main Street. And of course, the band is the city cornet band. And uh, your dad's probably playing in that particular band. Yes. Now, probably the greatest legacy that this band left to the people of St. John was the King Edward's Bandstand. Yes. Yes. What can you tell us about that? Well, I can only tell you that it's great to see it being replaced as it was originally. Um, and when I first came back, I couldn't believe the changes in St. John. And uh, now to know that the bandstand, which is the only one like it in the world, I understand, the other one was destroyed, having been destroyed by fire, um, it would be nice to see the copper, large copper ball replaced that the lights played on and it reflected all the different lights. The, um, and a lot the, of, you know, I was going to say, Mary, a lot of people get confused over the dates because I, I know there's lots of dates that, I mean, there's a plaque on it that says 19, what, 9, 19, 10. 1909 was when it was supposed to be presented to the city. Yeah. And we know that the, the first concert was in August 1908. Uh, the bandstand, from what I've been able to find, was your dad's idea. Um, the bandstand was the bandstand. his idea. Yeah. And it was only in a matter of a couple months from idea to the time that they had the bandstand basically... Yes, a matter of months. E right. ...erected. And then in August 1909, or 1908, they had the first concert. It wasn't finished. And I think that's important. We'll see photographs with my next guest of what the bandstand was like before it was finished and after. But one thing you told me was that your dad spent a lot of time at the band. Yes, he did, but never neglected his family. He was a good father, yeah. you know, in spite of all of his attention to the band. Uh, did you have a, a large family? A large family, eight boys and four girls. And what did your dad do for a living other than <laughs> Spending all his time with the band. Well, no, no, he was fully employed. He had his own uh, Connolly's Fish Market, uh, Central Market, in the uh, city market, and uh, which was a thriving business. And he started out as a cooper. Wow, made you know, And uh, Well, I'm sure there's probably some of our viewers that remember uh, Connolly's in the city market. Oh, I'm sure. From such a large family, too, you know. There was also a fish fish market in the valley and one in West St. John in later years, right. you know. Well, I hope maybe some of our viewers out uh, watching the program today may have some photographs or information about your father, oh, the city corner band, wonderful. or other band members, because mm. I should tell people that uh, we're preparing a manuscript, a history of the city cornet band, and uh, we've, I've, ga I've gathered a lot of artifacts about the band. Um, mm. There is, to my knowledge, one instrument, I believe it, one cornet that has survived um, here in the city. So if you can help us, please give me a call at either home. Uh, I'm in the St. John Telephone Book at 693-2598 here at the station. Mary and I will be collaborating on this over the next several months to make sure that when the bandstand is rededicated and finished, there will be uh, uh, this history available. Mary, I want to give you this book, Compliments of the New Brunswick Museum. It's all the days of his life. It's a biography of Reverend H.A. Cody, who maybe had a... I think he had a part to play with the St. Mary's Band and maybe the City Cornet Band. But anyways, I hope you enjoy reading the book. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary. Bye.
Well, that's that segment of the show. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. I'm sure many of you who live here in St. John are aware that the King Edward's Bandstand in King Square is undergoing restoration. And my next guest is president of the Central Business Development Corporation, which has undertaken this project. I'd like to welcome Martin Feinberg. Marty, I'm glad you could come in. Uh, we kept you waiting a few minutes to uh, get you on to tell us about this. Now, we just uh, met Mary McCann. She told us a bit about the bandstand, uh, the city corner band, her father. Why? Are you focusing on the bandstand? Why spend the money? Well, as you know, Harold, uh, the Central Business Development Corporation is a public corporation, and we're incorporated by an act of legislature. And uh, those who were fundamental in bringing the, the corporation to fruition uh, selected as a letterhead the picture of the band shell as it exists in King Square. And under our program and under our uh, Main Street uh, study that was done and submitted to the provincial government for approval. One of the projects contained in that study dealt with King Square in the development of King Square, which included all of the facades of the buildings surrounding the square, which in uh, architectural terms, if you will, are considered to be part of the square. As well, the monuments that are inside, uh, that are in the square, uh, there's a lighting program that is uh, that is included in this plan as well. Um, and of course, the restoration of the band shell itself. Uh, as a result of, of the availability of uh, grant monies and as a result of our belief, uh, the board of directors in 1980, I believe it was 1985, in the latter part of the year, perhaps even 86, I uh, can't quite recall which year, it was resolved that uh, we, that we would uh, restore the band shell to its original condition. We felt that we would want to do that because uh, it would enhance the, the uh, beauty of our downtown core and make it a very pleasant place to be. It's our view and our belief that once all the lighting is in place in King Square, subsequent to the completion of the renovation of the band shell, that it'll be a very bright place to be in in the evening and people will uh, have more of a tendency to congregate there as, was, as it used to be. Right. Uh, so it'll just essentially make the place much more pleasant, and uh, accordingly, uh, we undertook the project. Okay, maybe what we should do now, Marty, is uh, I brought in a couple of historical photographs and a, a few slides of the work that is being undertaken right now. Maybe we take a look at the first two photographs, and I, I probably know more about the photographs. I'm not sure if you've seen these before, but this is the bandstand in August 1908, about three months after the idea. It took about three months to, to put it up. And um, I suppose our viewers will notice some differences. First off, there is no cornet at the, uh, the top. The railing on the uh, band level is a, a, a small metal wire mesh that you really can't see very well here. Uh, the fountain's not quite in place yet. And as we heard from Mary, it was um, conceived by James Connolly, the members of the band. The money was raised. They had some rather ingenious <coughs> ways. Uh, they offered uh, round-the-world cruises in the music fairs and people would buy tickets and went around the world cruise which was rather <laughs> interesting back then they raised the money and um they were going to present it to the city but um i suppose with all things uh, well this particular concert was fogged out or just delayed the concert but because they didn't have enough money at the time they didn't finish the bandstand and thus they couldn't give it to the city so it wasn't until uh, 1908 so this is part of the, the problem we have with dates it was first concert in 1908 it was supposed to be presented in, what, October 25th, 1909, but it wasn't presented until November 2nd, 1909, again because of bad weather, <laughs> <laughs> which we're familiar with here in St. John. If we go into our next slide, or our next photograph, we can see the bandstand basically as it was presented to the city. We see the cornet at the top that was a, a weather vane which I thought was in. And there's been a lot of discussion whether it was a flugelhorn or a lot of other instruments, but according to the, uh, the documentation, it was a, um, a coronet. And originally... Looks it was like a coronet to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> originally it was covered with uh, tin. Now, I don't know if this particular one is. I haven't gotten that close to see it. But with this, uh, are you planning on making it a weather vane again or just keeping it solid? 
Boy, uh, I did not know it was a weather vane at one point in time, although it's certainly susceptible to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Its location. Uh, I know that we're planning on straightening it and uh, having it look uh, aesthetically again, uh, give it an aesthetic look again, because uh, certainly right now it's tilted and cocked off to the side. Now, if we can hold uh, that particular view, um, we can see the wooden railing, yeah. which you may or may not put back depending on the well, advice you get. No, no, that's already been determined, Harold. The, uh, uh, our original plans called, uh, as a result of working with our consultant, uh, Basic Design Associates, which are uh, out of Sussex, Right. Uh, Mr. Sackville uh, had worked very closely with ourselves and uh, an individual by the name of Nick Hill, who's a heritage planner at Here St. John. Yes. Uh, he's in the planning department. He's uh, come to us from Ontario, I believe. Mm -hmm. At any rate, uh, uh, our original plans called for the removal of every second balustrade off of that uh, balcony uh, banister. And uh, after the planning department, through Nick, Nick Hill, uh, had done some research, I don't know if he's spoken to you or not, but yeah, uh, I, he's I made him aware of this material after. He had spoken to you. Oh, I see. Well, at any rate, he had done some sort of research and had uh, obviously uh, found the photograph done in 1908 when, as you say, it was uh, not completely yeah. dedicated to the city. At any rate, uh, uh, we were um, we have to work because that is in the preservation area of the city mm -hmm. and under it comes under the uh, preservation review re review board's uh, jurisdiction. We had to comply with their requirements, and one of the requirements was that instead of Re in our reconstruction or our uh, uh, refurbishing of the band shell, we had to uh, restore it to its original shape, its original condition. Uh, and that included uh, banisters, which are different from what we see there. They'd be made out of metal. Uh, and I, you mentioned wire mesh in that 1908 photograph. I don't believe that that will be there. The coronet will be there. Mm -hmm. um, now, th something else that I didn't realize, and this is the only photograph I've ever seen that has it, and we uh, may not be able to see, but right in the very center over the fountain, there was a huge glass globe, and it had nine colored lights with two small plaques, City Cornet Band and the uh, F. Neil Brody. And we can barely see it here, but that's something that nobody was aware of. I certainly wasn't. And uh, wh whether at some point... Uh, and I know it's very difficult for CBDC to say, hey, wait a minute, we've got to put this in right now. But that might be a consideration for the future. Well, with our, with our plan, uh, we're, we are going to be constructing the band shell. Uh, and when we complete that, which should be the completion uh, date is set for the end of November right. uh, 1987, uh, when that is completed, uh, we are also going to turn our minds to developing the rest of the square which means that next year we're also going to be working on the pool and on the fountain, which are two separate entities in our, in our minds as a result okay. of working with our consultant. And that will be done um, very early after this coming winter. Uh, the pool will be a little bit different than what it's been in the past. I understand before it was hooked directly into the uh, water main uh, for the city. However, when we continue to, uh, when we complete that phase of the project, we are going to have a, a circulatory water system in it so that uh, the city won't have a high cost of operations when we dedicate it back to the city after our com completion of our work. Okay, now you mentioned rededication. Are you planning some sort of a rededication ceremony? Or is that a possibility? Uh, well, some discussion has been held around the, around the table. Uh, we have a number of good ideas. Uh, we certainly feel as though we should do something. Um, for our, <clears throat> excuse me, for next year, uh, as a matter of fact, one of the, uh, by then, King Square will be completed, all, all, right. all of our work, including the lighting of all the monuments, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, and the facades around the square. We're thinking of uh, utilizing it uh, and concentrating on putting a Charles Dickens scene in or something like that around Christmas time. But, but as far as a dedication uh, of the band shell uh, is concerned, We've got a number of ideas, and okay. we have to work them out. Great. Thank you very much, Marty, for coming in. Thank you for having me. Well, that's the show. Boy, this time is really going too fast. We're going to be back uh, next week, but we're going to be going to Fredericton, and we're going to do a show about Fredericton, New Brunswick. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>